السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته يا ما شاء الله Now today, tonight, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to have an amazing program and we always like to start the program up with uh, a little bit of Qur'an inshallah ta'ala. So before he comes down, bin Allah ta'ala, we're going to start with a little bit of Qur'an. We'll start up inshallah ta'ala and then inshallah ta'ala, we'll get started. What sort of would you like, guys like to hear? Mariam, Bakara, the whole thing? <laughs> the whole thing? No, just 285 of the 286 verses. <laughs> oh. Just skip it. Uh, Ali Flam uh, means so, go right into uh, it. Someone says Surah Mariam. I like Surah Mariam. Yeah? yeah. Oh, yeah. Countdown. What is this? Countdown. He's saying that you didn't get a countdown, you're already on the air. MashaAllah ta'ala. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. Welcome to... Amish town. MashaAllah ta'ala, we saw lots and lots of buggies. Did you bring any Amish? I saw some horses out there. We actually saw, you saw some horses? I saw horses. I saw buggies. Did you, you know, when you saw, you know what a saw horse is for, cutting wood and... Yes. Uh, yes. You saw a boogie. I saw a buggy. Buggy. Yes. A buggy. It's a Y after a bug. Uh, a Y after a bug. <laughs> <laughs> so, a little bit of both. But inshallah ta'ala, we're going to start up with a little bit of recitation of Quran. Bidilai ta'ala, a special request today was Surah Maryam. Surah Maryam, yeah. Yes, we're not going to be doing the whole thing. Not all of it? No. Just the good parts. The whole thing is good. <laughs> oh, okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كاف يا عين صاد ذكر رحمة ربك عبده زكريا ولم أكن بدعائك رب شقيا وإني خفت الموالي من ورائي وكانت امرأتي عاقرا فهب لي من لدنك وليا يرثني Translation for us, inshallah. Go ahead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He starts out with, He starts the surah out with letters that are only understood by Him. Then He says, Dhikru rahmati rabbika abdahu zakariya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to his servant Zakaria. When he called on his Lord in a time, the middle of the night. You see, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we make dua, when we get up to pray in the middle of the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has special, special, um, special mercy reserved for us all. So Allah is reminding us when Zakaria was calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during that time of the night. And what did he say? He said, Oh my Lord, my bones are becoming weak and weary. 
and my head is lit up with gray hair. And it's not difficult, and I, I am not someone who disobeys you. And I am not someone who abandons your remembrance and calling upon you. But they, I have family members. And these family members, I'm worried that they will not continue the trust that I'm going to leave behind. And from my family, from my proge progeny, to carry this inheritance. She can't have kids. Unexpected gift. Someone. in the middle of the night while he was praying. Bad tidings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave He thought just So they said, O oh, Zakaria, indeed we give you the glad, glad tidings of our son. His name is Yahya, and no one has been named Yahya ever before. What does Yahya mean? Allahu <laughs> Alam. If, if we, if we, it, it means happiness. Well, it's laughter and happiness. Laughter and happiness. This is what, this is uh, according to one of the tafsir of the, the ayah, the, 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 this meaning anyway of mm -hmm. his name is like a laughter or happiness because she was so happy and of course he was too. Subhanallah. And inshallah ta'ala when we make dua, in the middle of the night, inshallah tonight, right? We make dua sincerely, and we don't wake up and tell anybody that we did it, right? Because a lot of times we mess up and we make dua, and then we're like... But when I'm telling people how to do it, is it okay if I tell them some things that happen? When we do it as an example to encourage others, then there's nothing wrong with it. Oh, okay. But the best good deeds, as uh, Hassan al-Basri, rahmanullah ta'ala said, he said each and every one of us should have something secret that nobody knows about. Some, a secret good deed that nobody knows about. Not even our wives, not even our kids. There's an example. I'm not allowed to have even thoughts that my wife doesn't know. <laughs> There's an example of... They call, they call her Homeland Security. <laughs> <laughs> There's an example of Muhammad ibn Munkabid. ta'ala, what he would do was he would get up in the middle of the night and pray. Yeah. And whenever, and you know, for the sunnahs, when we're praying our sunnahs like tahajjud or qiyam al layl, we can cut them off at any given time and then go back and start over again. So when someone walk, would walk in the room, he would act like he was sleeping. And then when they would leave, he would get back up. 
Wait a minute. He was in Salat and he could lay down? We would act like he, because for the sunnahs we can just leave. You can just leave the salahs. Like for example, if someone is making tahiyat al masjid or any kind of sunnah, right. and the fard comes in, you can ju- you can leave. Or we have the story of George, where he didn't leave his sunnah and his mom left, uh, made dua against him because she called upon him, and she was in the right to make dua against him because he didn't answer her call while he was making his sunnahs. Okay, so, but if that means he just left it and he laid down, but then he had to start a brand new salat. A brand new salat, correct. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Barakallah So we should all have something secret, a secret good deed that no one knows about. Hmm. And we know if we have that secret good deed and we keep it up all the time, even if it's something small, it could be something as small as removing dust from the carpet, vacuuming the masjid in the middle of the night before anyone comes or before any, after everyone leaves. It could be something like uh, sweeping the parking lot. It could be something like removing any big stick that you you can make a promise to Allah. Everything, any harm that I see in the middle of the road, I'm going to park my car on the side of the road and I'm going to get out and I'm going to remove it. I'm going to do it for Allah only and no one will ever know about it. It can be something that small. And we know the story of the woman who was a prostitute. And she did something that was sincere and no one knew about it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave her and entered her into Jannah. So this small good deed that no one knows about could be what saves us from the hellfire. Mm, excellent. As a matter of fact, you know what? I think this is a good time for us to introduce our special guest because uh, we have been talking together, myself and our special guest, all the way over here from our last event. Now, how many of you heard, by the way, about the halal fiesta that we had today? Anybody heard about the halal food? You heard about it? Three people? Eight people? Everybody heard about it? Mm, you should have been watching Guidance TV or just seen it. <laughs> what do you think? I think so. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Zakalah Khair, that was Harun Amin all the way from Detroit. That's Motor City, in case you didn't know that. And uh, he's with Guidus TV and has a special program that comes on this very night. But it's been preempted or kind of postempted in this case because we were down the road. And so this is actually your program. That's why I'm not going to do anything unless I ask you first. You like that? Sure. Okay. Now, we have a special guest with us today. A guest that Allah sent to me exactly on the right time in the right way. Because for the last two days, we have been talking about been quoting an ayah from the Quran, wherein many people hear it, but don't know that's only half of it. And this is the one in Surah comes from. And this ayah is ayah 110. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس Alhamdulillah. 
Now, how many of you heard this, uh, those here in our present audience, how many have you ever heard this particular ayah from Quran? Anybody heard it before? Is that the full ayah? He said it's not. How many say it's not the full ayah? Ah, so we got a lot of people that know here. Now that's basically where they didn't know so much about that. But uh, you're right. There is more. Translation, more or less, of this particular verse of the Quran has some, in itself, even in English, has some very deep stuff going on, even before we go to the Arabic. It really does. And we'll endeavor now to try to give you some uh, idea of the meaning. And those of you at home, if you'd like to know where this is, it's in chapter 3, verse 110 in the Quran. And if you want to know more even about that, keep reading back to, I think it's Ayah 110. 14 or 116 relative to this same topic. But suffice to say that Allah is giving a very big compliment here and encouragement really because he said you're the best of nations raised up for all of mankind provided of course that you do what? You call, you order. It says enjoin, but a lot of us we don't know. You don't use that word. When's the last time you said enjoin something? You didn't tell anybody that. So it's commanding. When you enjoin your children to do something, you're actually telling them. I told you, you do this now. Okay, that's commanding. That's honor. That's a commandment. Honor, commandment. Okay. So you command what is this word, maruf. And you forbid what is the word munkar. And you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And most people think it ends right there. Because this is what we usually hear. And we have some commentary about that, but I won't go into it too deep right now, except to say that Maruf and Munkar here is something very, very big. It is actually calling to everything and anything which is the righteous uh, relative to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And if you're not willing to call to that and forbid what takes people away from that, then how in the world could you say you believe in Allah to start with? And then to continue. <clears throat> And if the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, had believed it would be better for them, men whom, from them, this is almost like the exception, right? Because watch what's going to happen. From them are believers. But the vast majority, akthara homo, fasikun, are you said corrupt. I like that one. Corrupt. They are disobedient. They do not follow the commandments. They'll work even against it. And the word you use, corrupt, I like that even better because it is exactly what we're experiencing and seeing today. Now you say, well, what in the world has that got to do with introducing a guest? Does that sound like the way you introduce a guest? No. <clears throat> Yours truly used to be a Christian. How many already knew that? Okay. And that means the Ahu Kitab, right? People of the book. What book is there that we're talking about? If it isn't the Bible, what in the world is it? The only other book mentioned really in the Quran is the Quran itself, right? And Allah is telling us about the people of previous scripture, previous revelation, 
and I'm one of those. And I know from my point of view, from me and some others like me from the Christian church, ministers, preachers, even a bishop, and many in the field of calling to Christianity who have switched, male and female both, have switched and come to Islam. I know many. Alhamdulillah. But I found them to be the best of the people before they came to Islam already. And they became even better when they came into Islam. I found them to be really good, clean-hearted, nice, kind, generous people. Maybe they had some strange circumstances in their life that others may not appreciate, but certainly they were the best of the, of the Christians. And when they came to Islam, they shared with this the same expression and feelings is that what we had that was beautiful as Christian, we found even more beautiful in Islam. Clarification, understanding, removal of doubts, removal of some of the the contradictions, etc. We found many beautiful things. Most of the people that I've met, with exception of a few, have been from the Christian side. Occasionally, I meet some from the Jewish family. And I'm really impressed when they tell me their stories. And I'd like for you to hear one tonight from our Jewish brothers and sisters who've come to Islam. We have tonight with you Abu Mujahid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I just went to the Halal Food Fest to get some food today. <laughs> and one of the first people I saw there was Sheikh Yusuf Festis. And he said, what are you doing tonight? And I said, I don't know. Allah knows. He said, come with me. And I had just read that he has rights on me. If I didn't have anything to do, I'm, I'm supposed to accept invitations. So I said, where are we going? He said, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I said, alhamdulillah. So I checked with, I have some commitments. I made sure my commitments were free. And uh, here I am, alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah. I was born into a Jewish family, and I'm so grateful to my mother and father because the first my first memories are monotheism. My first memories are here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. So I was halfway home. Maybe a, more, even by the grace of Allah. I was born into a monotheistic family, and it was and uh, good people, good and decent people. In the Quran, it says there are some good Jews, and by the grace of Allah, my parents are those some of those people. Fast forward to college. I was loving my neighbors anyway, but I, I saw the, in other words, put more love into it, put more love into it, put more, put more spirit into what you do. And uh, the part about loving your enemies, you know, getting, getting, that's not easy. No, no. It's like the Chinese finger trap, you know, you pull your, <laughs> you pull your card, you loosen up, you're free. <laughs> so that happened around the age of 20. Uh, I went through a lot of different experiences in my life. I don't want to go into every single one. But five years ago, when I was 60, my son called me, and he knew that I had been looking for the truth all my life, and uh, he said, Dad, and I'd been looking into the world at all the things in the world and everything, and he said, Dad, take that big searchlight in your brain that you've been looking at all the things in the world for, all the truth about what's going on in the world, and he said, turn that searchlight 180 degrees and look for what's true. And I think probably within a week, Allah made me Muslim. Uh, and I say Allah made me Muslim because 
that's how that's what happened I didn't decide to become Muslim I did, if somebody had said you're gonna be Muslim the day before I would have laughed at him uh, I didn't you know it was the furthest thing from my mind but when the connection was made in my heart in my intellect in my in my in every every part of me recognized after my son said to me look here and here and here in the Old Testament in the in the Torah and look here and here in the gospel and it's talking about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when I open the book you ever watch the football games where you see the holographic first down line it's not really there but there's a line there on the TV it was like Allah put highlighted it was like there was highlights it was like three, it was standing out of the book it's like this is this is about the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Deuteronomy 18:18 Deuteronomy 32:2 Isaiah John 16 so many places so many Solomon so many places and it, it just it's just like when you drive through those parking lots with the spikes and it says you can't back up if you back up, you're going to damage your tires. I had just driven over these spikes. And, and, a lot, and I said, I, I, I'm responsible for what I know. Yeah. And then my brain shifted into, I don't know what gear, and it said, oh, what is so-and-so going to think? What is so-and-so this and that and this and that? And it was just like there was an override. And the override was, doesn't matter. It'll all work out. You're Muslim, you're home. This is, this, is your, this is your birthright, as my first imam used to call Islam, is your birthright. This is your birthright. This is what you've been looking for all your life. And um, that was five years ago. Um, I feel like there are these huge reservoirs of tears behind my, filling up my entire brain and heart area. And, by the, and he holds them back so I can function in this world. Since I've become Muslim, I cannot describe, I cannot put it into words. I just can't. All I can say is I'm just so grateful. I am just so grateful. You know, that Allah made me Muslim. This is what we were born to to be and to do. So, what was the question? <laughs> I've known this guy for the last three, four hours. <laughs> And I swear to Almighty Allah, I have never met anybody that I felt like I knew more than I do him right now. And I'll tell you why. And our short ride over here, and it was only half of the ride from from uh, South Jersey, wherever we were, South Jersey, to here. Uh, I kept thinking he's talking about my story. The things that happened, the situation, the way the people treated him before and then treated him after, I went through the same thing. And then he reminded he reminded me of the hadith of Rasul Salam when Abdullah bin Salam Abdullah bin Salam was the rabbi. Was the rabbi. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Abdullah bin Salam. Abdullah bin Salul. Salul. Salud? Yeah, Salul. 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 Yes. Really? Yes. Is he right? No, oh, okay. Abdullah bin Salul. He was the rabbi there in Medina. And he was going to accept Islam at the hand of Rasulullah Islam. And then he told the Rasul go out and ask them who I am. To ask the Jews who I am. And he did. He said, what do you say about this man? He said, they told him, he's the best of us. The son of the best of us. He is the most knowledgeable you know, like the religion in that? He's the most knowledgeable of us. And he is the son of the most knowledgeable of us. And he, they're going on like this. And then Rasul Sassam, he said, what would you say if he accepted Islam? Like, salam. Thank you. I never argue with my guests on TV. Thank you so much. Yeah. Abdullah bin Salam. Uh, well, I guess he wouldn't care if you called him something else. He was happy to be a Muslim. Maybe he changed his name after he got to Islam. Anyway, we'll stay with that. Okay? So, and, and what matters here is what happened, what they said about him. 
Because the next thing when Rasul Islam said, what would you say if he came to Islam? May Allah save him from that. You know, like, na'udhu <laughs> billah. We say that about shaitan. <laughs> and then he stepped forward out of the kaima, out of the tent. And when he came out there, he said, Ashadu la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there's none to worship except Allah. Alone. Without any partners. One God. One way. All right. But then, here come the big part. So when you say that, this means you become a Muslim. Because Jews and Christians can say, because that's the first commandment. But when you say that Muhammad is the last and the final messenger of Almighty God, now you have zeroed in on the target. And as soon as he did, they all chime together. He's the worst of us. He's the son of the worst of us. He's the most ignorant of us. He is the son of the most ignorant and so on. And they went on like that. Look how fickle people can be over what? Just because you, and remember they said he's the most knowledgeable now. Keep this in mind. If he's the most knowledgeable and he's telling you you should do this and they go, no, 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 no. You just became ignorant. That means what? That means what? That means you didn't really believe him to be the most knowledgeable or else you can't accept truth when it hits you in the face. That's it. So in any case, I was listening to our brother Abu Mujahid today. In case you didn't figure out, his name is Abu. What is Abu? The father of, the father of Mujahid. Mujahid. Now, in his story, in his story, who was giving him this good advice? His son. His son, yeah. Matthew Mujahid. Yes. Matthew. His son is Matthew. That's his name. That's his English name. Matthew, who became. Mujahid. Yeah. How about that? How about that? And father and son. Yeah. In my case, it was son and then father. But anyway, this is more stories. We'll save some more for other times. The part about the he pulled me out of the world. Oh, I want you to tell this. You tell this. Okay. Yeah, that's his too precious. Right. I'm not going to steal that thunder from right. anybody. Listen to this. Majid, if you're if you're watching this. Uh Assalamu alaikum. Um, when when Majai was born, uh, it was in the 80s. We were all into natural childbirth and everything. And uh, when uh, his mother was going into labor, the midwife was in the bathroom, and uh, he started to crown. He started, his head started coming out. So I said to the midwife, you know, his head starting to crown. She threw me a washcloth and said, just hold him, hold it there, and he popped out, and there he was. So the 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 family, the new family uh, story is, I pulled him into this dunya and he pulled me out of this dunya. <laughs> by the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. There, there was no way I was going to try to tell that one. No, that's that's too precious. For me, Alhamdulillah, before my father passed away, I was able to hear him clearly say, Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. He began doing his salah with us, and then until he began to get to the point where he just couldn't remember anything at all anymore, he did do what he could. One of the last things he asked me, if I can't do Hajj, can you do it for me? As soon as I was able to do Hajj, of course I had done it, so I already had the Hajj. Right after my father passed away, one of our brothers, one, an imam in New York came to me and he said, is there any possibility you could join Dar es Salaam for Hajj this year and be a mutawa full pay for everything? I said, can I do it on behalf of my father? I'm just asking him to verify everything. He said, of course. I said, okay, let's go. And the first Hajj I ever made, 1993, my wife and I together, we said, man, that was really hard. But at least it's over. And it wasn't. When we got home, our total, everything in our home had been stolen. <laughs> Even a brand new air conditioner we had not installed yet had been stolen. But 
except for the plates and some pots and pans, which were stacked up at the door to be taken out. So we must have caught these guys in the act. <laughs> the, the plates, come on. <laughs> you got to be desperate. But anyhow, <laughs> yeah. But what I'm saying is that that's Hodge, and that means that I accepted it from you, because he still give you some more, and when you got home, just let you know, don't worry, your Hodge's worked. Inshallah. Now, the second time I did the Hodge, on behalf of my father, it was so easy, and I tried to do some work, and they wouldn't let me. I tried to, you know, let me keep up with some of the charts that you have to keep for the, the guests and so on. Let me keep up with this. Let me move that. No, 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 no. Just talk. When you get a chance to sit and talk with the people, tell them things and, and about Hajj, about uh, Islam, things like that. So it was the easiest Hajj. Since then, I've done it many times. Alhamdulillah, I mean, but that was the easiest. So I did the hardest and the easiest because I was doing it on behalf of my father. Allah made it so easy. And and I, I tell you, I, it, I love everything about Islam. There isn't anything in Islam that I don't love. There are a lot of things about me that I don't love. But that's another story for another time, too. And while we're on the subject of Hajj, I want to let everybody know, yes, we are planning a group to go for Hajj, but it's not the original one that we said we were going to do. It was like um, um, between eleven and $15,000 a person. We found a way to get it a lot easier. A lot less, and still have all of the quality stuff, first class, blah, 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 some five-star hotels, blah, blah, blah. And this is not a commercial. I'm just telling you so if you had thought, oh, we can't afford it, maybe you still can. You can write to us about it's, um, well, what's the address on it? Hodge. No, oh, yeah, Hodge. <laughs> I'm not used to this email address. Write to Hodge, H-A-J-J, -J -J, at guide us TV and we can send you details about that if you want to know more about what we're going to do where we're going to be things like that it's Hodge H A J J at guide us TV and inshallah somebody will get back to you and tell you all about the whole thing all right and uh, wow now I want to come back to Harun who has been really doing a lot how many have been watching guide us TV how many are watching God is TV? How many of you seen recite on TV with the children getting on reciting? You like that? Last night we had the privilege, the privilege to be with one of our reciters of the Quran who has remembered more, re memorized, rememberized, memorized, memorized, uh, memorized. Okay, mem remember memorized more, more than half of the Quran, eighteen Jews of the Quran. <laughs> And this little preserver of the Quran, we call them hafiz when they preserve Quran, yeah? Yes. Hafiz. And there's a young lady, a young lady, eight years old. Eight years old. Eight years old. You should hear her recite. And you can hear our reciters anytime on Harun's show. Harun, I mean, the imam and teacher of Quran in Detroit, has a program for this. He has two programs. One is the live program and one is a recorded program. And I'm going to ask him to tell us a little bit about that right now. The recorded one? Up to you. Both. We'll start with the live one, inshallah, because the live one is... Live is live. Or should we start with something that'll... Or should we end with something that won't give them bad dreams? I don't know. <laughs> so let's start with something that, that'll that keep them a little bit on edge so that we can end with something that won't give them bad dreams. How about that? I like it. Okay. Let's do that, inshallah. Ta'ala. So as for the recorded program, the, re the recorded program is called Rukia, Jinn's Black Magic and the Evil Eye and their cures based on the Quran and Sunnah. And so this program specializes in giving information on these different things. So people uh, towards the end of the show, people email 
me personally, and they ask questions, and then we answer these questions towards the end of the show. And if need be, people who cannot resolve their issues on their own, we also we also take the time out to see them and to make sure that inshallah ta'ala they get rid of these problems even if they do have haunted houses. Now, so that you guys don't go to bed tonight thinking that there's something standing inside of my closet and he's going to eat me and he has a <laughs> pancake and he's going to pour mil maple syrup on my toes and all of this. <laughs> The second program that we have during the weekend, actually this is the time that we have it, is called Recite on TV. And every year during Ramadan we have a Quran competition where the students upload their videos and the best video that's chosen with the best tajweed, voice, etc. This video, the winner of that video gets a grand prize of one thousand dollars a grand grand a grand grand <laughs> and throughout the rest of the year the first 15 minutes I would focus on offering a rule of tajweed or a rule of the maharaj of the letters how to properly pronounce them and then Kids call in and recite, and I personally, on, live on Guidance TV, work with them on that particular rule for that particular day. It's a very popular program, mashallah ta'ala, we get anywhere from 200 to 600 calls per episode. Alhamdulillah. And that's it. <laughs> Mashallah, I want to invite all of you to watch our programs. We have many live programs throughout the month. You want to be sure and catch those because they can have a very positive effect on all of the audience. Muslims, non-Muslims, new Muslims, old Muslims, uh, half-awake Muslims. Is that a nice way to say it? Half-awake. I'm a Muslim, but I don't. Anyway, alhamdulillah. Yeah, we'll stop at that. I also... <laughs> also, I want to invite you, especially to watch the live shows where we have call-in, because we're going to be adding another call-in program. We have not solidified the date. I spoke with one imam yesterday, and I don't want to go further than that until we actually have it set up with him. He said yes, but we've got to work with the local community there because there are some issues in funding and so on to make it be able to be practical. Once that's in place, though, whether there or whatever, we will have a program, inshallah, where you will be able to call in and just ask questions about fiqh, questions that need to have a ruling or fatwa or fatawa, and make it so that you will have references to understand the answers and also explain to us what that will really is. For instance, just an overall, is to understand that a fatwa means that the scholar has heard a particular instance and condition, and based on his research and understanding, has said this is what Islam would want you to do in this case. The meaning it would not be applicable to everybody on the whole planet. For ever and ever after that, but anybody having the same circumstance, the same situation, the same environment, etc., etc., then most likely this would apply. <coughs> so there are many things about these rulings that we need to know, and we need to have professionals who really can help us, and that's what we're working on right now. And now another thing, well, and I would like to tell you about this, we only got a couple minutes left, and I would like for you to know about this. Guidance TV is still expanding, and one of the areas where we're expanding right now is for our children. We have a whole new series coming out. If you've been watching Guidance TV right along, then you understand what we're doing. You've seen it. But if you haven't seen it before, we have two separate areas that we're working on. One is like cartoons. And, have anybody seen Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? 
Anybody know this was Mr. Rogers? They still, ha even though he passed away, the church that he was with, a certain church group, has continued it, only they call it a little different, but it's a, mem a memorial for him. And they have some of the cartoon. Alhamdulillah. They have some of the what some of the brothers in England studied in Mes so that's why it's called the Mystery Bunch, have put together something even better for us, even better for the Muslims, and that is coming out. We raised the money for this in Ramadan to give it a big kickstart, get it on track again. The other thing that we have is our group in Texas, that ha where we have one of our antennas, and they are putting together something really great with uh, Brother Mustaqim. Brother Mustaqim and his puppets, and maybe you've seen that. How many of you seen the puppets on, on Guidance TV? And Ahmed and Suhaila, Little Sheikh, and the programs that we do. Well, that's coming back really strong right now. The first ones were just released this week, so we've got a whole lot of new programs there. So we got a lot of work, and uh, we got a lot of effort going into it. You can join us by doing several things. Number one, we want you to know about this bumper sticker. Those of you at home have seen me talking about it today already. We had these at the Halal Fiesta today in New Jersey, and this one says, Worship the Creator, not the creation. It basically, it means la ilaha illa law. If you don't, if you don't worship anything but the creator. Way. So this nice little bumper sticker here also has Guide Us TV right on it. Guide Us TV, showing people how to get to that. Put these, please, on your bumpers. Let people know. This is one of the best ways to get people to easily identify that this is something positive, something good before they get to it. And then when they see the English programs with the nice settings and they go, wow, this is really professional, you will be able to be giving Dawa right along with us. Second of all is this. This form you can fill out and do this as though you were subscribing to a TV channel, although it's free anyway. Whether you subscribe or not, it has nothing to do with money. It has to do with whether or not you get reward for it, for helping it keep going and making it so we can do even more. We want you to only do monthly increments. This is not fundraising tonight. We're not asking you to donate anything. If you want to uh, do something like that, I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. But this is so you can do something every month, every month, every month. 30, 50, 100, whatever is in your budget, you do this. And this is your commitment to be part of what we're doing. Second or third or fourth or wherever we're at. <laughs> Yeah, here we go. This one right here, this, and this is the first time in, in a couple years that I've had two with me. Tonight we have two with us. This one right here tells you about the channel, samples of the channel, and makes it easy for you to understand what you're getting into before you do it. This way you can look at it and see for yourself. Is it, do I like it or no? And then finally this one. And I'm going to close with this because this is what we're really all about, is helping people know what's Islam. We have a website, what's Islam. There's no is, it's just what's. W-H-A-T-S-I-S-L-A-M dot com, what's Islam dot com. And this is the audio for it right here. And we have some of these tonight. And if you get excited and want more than one, please don't take more than one. You can make a copy. You're welcome to do that. And there is a QR on it. You can scan, and it will help you get to the website. That's how cool it is. Is that cool? That's cool. Yes, sir. All right, so we've got that. Now, finally, I want to tell you a little quick story. It happened in Philadelphia. How far are we from Philadelphia? One and a half hour. Half hour? One and a half hour. An hour and a half? Hour and a half. Did I fall asleep on the way over here? <laughs> anyway, not far from here anyway, depending on how the crow flies. <laughs> It was there that somebody called in live and said, I'll 
Um, I would, why is that such irony? Because I find so many Muslims named Muhammad saying Mike. Yeah. Oh. So if you didn't like the name Muhammad, look at how many mics do. Yeah, that was kind of hard, wasn't it? <laughs> but I wanted to make that point because a lot of our youth are getting away from Islam without realizing it, and that's one of the ways. Leaving Salah is a real serious one. Drinking alcohol, doing drugs, this is very serious. It's not a joke. And it means that Allah let you do it because your attitude, he doesn't want you anymore. You better correct your attitude and get back into Islam. Because Allah doesn't need you. But we all need Allah. This is very serious. If you find yourself drifting away, understand there's something wrong in your attitude that has to be corrected quick. Don't lose your Islam. Brothers, sisters, listen careful to this. The relationship with your family, with your friends, and your relationship with Allah, the closer you're going to get to be with Muhammad Sallallahu in the paradise. That's a fact. And I don't want to sell it short. I want to bring that up before we wrap up our program tonight. I want to encourage all of us to get closer to Allah. And the best way to do that is through our Salah and our recitation of Quran. Not by watching television. Not by going to the internet. But your personal connection that you have with Allah, which is called Silla connection or salah five times a day minimum and spend that time thinking about Allah and you will find the real tawfiq the real success in your life and in the next life inshallah for Guidance TV for me for Abu Mujahid for Harun Amin all of us we say remember get guided with Guidance TV, Guide us TV. <laughs> Oh my God.